Well, hey guys, it's Joel. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another first impressions quick review. Although this one's a little bit different because if you've been watching the channel for a little while, you'll remember that I think about two years ago, maybe a little bit longer, I had an Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio on test for a couple of weeks. I drove it to Italy, but in that video, I actually ended up driving to Port Merion, which is a infamously Italian village in North Wales. It was a lot of fun. And most importantly, I really, really enjoyed the car. And sadly, I've not had the chance to drive any other Alfa Romeo or Stellantis products since that day. And today I'm at SMMT, which is a day where a bunch of journalists and influencers and manufacturers all come together and you can have a little go in all of these cars. And I saw the Stelvio Quad and I thought I really would love to get back in one of them because genuinely, of all the test cars I've been lucky enough to have, I've had Audi R8, Porsche 911 Turbos, you name it, this Stelvio Quadrifoglio was one of the cars I enjoyed the absolute most. And since I had it back in 2021 or 2022, whenever it was, it's grown up a little bit. It's been facelifted. So it has new design headlights, which are slightly more effective. And the most notable difference is the digital dashboard. Where the analog dials were in this before, it's now digital. Um, the screen in the middle has remained much the same, but on first impressions, it's been brought up to date. Now I have to say, I did actually quite like the analog dials in this, and for me, they were never really a problem, but we'll see how it goes and how it responds. I've always actually been a real fan of the Alfa Romeo infotainment system. No, it's not as sophisticated or as diverse as BMWs or Audis even, but I really enjoy the simplicity of it. I find it to be very responsive. I always found that the Apple CarPlay activates immediately when you get in. It's not fussy like the Audi systems are sometimes where you have to still plug it in. It's really, really good. It really, really works. It's not overpowering and not overbearing on the car. And what's really impressive about the car is the way that it drives. So I'm just gonna get my seat into position. I'm gonna move this wheel forward. Yeah, we've got a manual adjustable wheel. That's to be expected, I suppose. It doesn't quite come out as far as I'd like. Uh, let's move forward a little bit, check the mirrors. This is the thing with these test days, you literally get about 20 minutes with the cars. So by the time you have set everything up, you, oh dear. So by the time you've set everything up, let alone started filming something, you've got to give the car back. But there we go, I think we're all good. And this one I'm quite excited by because it's got the Akrapovich exhaust, which the one I had on test did not have. So this, of course, 2.9 V6 engine, which is Ferrari derived, making around 510 horsepower. ZF eight-speed gearbox, exactly the same as what you'd find in, what you would have found in a BMW. It's my old M240i had this exact gear selector and the same gearbox. And uh, release the electronic parking brake and off we go. So I was lucky enough to borrow one of these before for, I think it was two weeks I had the car. And like I say, I just, absolutely loved it. I'd never driven something that offered so much fun and excitement, but that was also so practical, because this is a full size SUV, five seats, big boot, plenty of room, and it was just utterly brilliant. And the thing that was most surprising as well is, well, I guess because it's an Alfa Romeo, it has Alfa Romeo steering. Basically, you've got a Ferrari engine under the bonnet, and it's got this utterly direct steering that is just wonderful to use. Immediately though, it does feel very firm. Obviously this is the Quadrifoglio, there's non-Quadrifoglio models, and we're just in dynamic mode. So if we put it into natural, we have natural, dynamic, and we have A, which I've forgotten what that stands for. Now, my main complaint with the Stelvio Quadrifoglio last time was that there was a lack of configurability between the modes, and I'm really intrigued to see if they have changed that. I believe I'll probably have to go into the infotainment screen and have a look, but essentially, there was no individual mode where I could configure all the best things from race, where you have the sound, for example, but also have the smoother throttle response and steering, because I found in race mode, which I'm just gonna to switch to now, it was very, yeah, and it still is, jolty. You see that? Very jolty, tiny bit of throttle input, very jolty, um, way too sharp for general driving, but, race mode you've got the valves open on the exhaust so I wanted to be able to hear that at all times however there was no way of individually configuring that so I really hope they've changed it I'm gonna just try and have a look now now let's go into the infotainment screen here go into settings go into vehicle information potentially and I can't seem to see a way to change it I can't believe it if they've not given me a configurable mode. That's a real disappointment. Got tire pressure information, settings. Uh, 
uh, convenience and comfort. No, 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 no. I want, I want an individual driver's mode. Okay, so it looks like there's still no individual mode, which is a real bummer. That was the one thing with this car before that with that would have been perfect. I could have had the comfort steering, throttle response and everything. Because as you can see, we're in race now, okay? And it is an absolute weapon, this thing. So, you know, this is a full-size SUV. And look at the lock I need there to get around that hairpin. Not much at all. These massive paddles and that gorgeous sound fixed to the steering column. They don't move with the wheel. And they're huge and they feel incredible. But this thing truly is a weapon. It has a bit of body roll, but then it's a massive car. But <laughs> when you put your foot down, it flies. 510 horsepower. Feels like a lot in this car. Just the way it goes around corners like this. Look, I mean, it just... Oh. You do have to keep your wits about you though, because it is a big heavy thing and under braking and hard turning under acceleration, it uh, yeah, it's noticeable. You can you can feel the weight. If I'm being really honest though, because I have such good memories of this car and I really, really like them, it doesn't feel <laughs> that solid. I guess, you know, it doesn't really feel that well built compared to Audi, BMW, Porsche, it's not the same. It, it's, it just feels a little bit loose. There's a few rattles and the steering wheel doesn't feel particularly nice to touch and the materials in here aren't as good as what you'd find in this German counterpart. But where it does lack in build quality potentially, it makes up in heaps with its personality. And although this sounds fantastic, I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed because, if I remember correctly, the previous test car I had sounded even better, and that didn't have the Acropovich system like this one does, so I'm just guessing that regulations and all that sort of emissions stuff has forced Alpha to put on extra silencers or particulate filters that have just taken away some of that um, sound, which is a little bit of a shame. And I'm going to be totally honest, I'm feeling a little bit deflated actually driving this. It's not like I remember. Potentially at that time I'd not experienced as many of the German cars. I think it's fair to say that my experience uh, was less when I last drove an Alfa Romeo. And potentially therefore I held it in a higher regard than where it really was. And I have to say, I listened to many people talk about these things quite negatively and I felt kind of like, what are they talking about? Because this thing is fantastic. But now I'm starting to see with that extra experience a little bit where they were coming from. What I'm gonna do, I believe I can take this on. Yeah, I can. I can take this on the high speed loop. I'm pretty sure they came here back in the Top Gear days a few times. Um, I can go up to 100 miles an hour on here and it's a big bolt. So we can really just put our foot down and see what that noise is all about and um, see if my opinion on it changes ever so slightly. But oh, I feel a little bit disappointed. I'm really gutted they haven't got a mode where I can configure stuff individually. Okay, we're clear, right? And let's just go straight up to 100 miles an hour. So we're at 30 now. It's not as fast as an Audi R8. It's probably not as fast as most new electric cars, but on paper at least, it's 0 60 in under four seconds. And the way in which it, it goes is fantastic. It's a gorgeous sound. It is really nice and much, much better than 90% of new family cars that you would alternatively buy to this. And it's pretty stable here at 100 miles an hour, albeit a little bit firm. Let's slow down a little bit now to motorway speeds, 70 miles per hour at 85 still. And let's just see if we can work out a little bit more in terms of what's going on. So as I mentioned, the materials aren't the best in here. It's sort of soft touch stuff, which is quite nice. But this carbon fiber effect stuff, I despise. It reminds me of 
garden furniture. We've still got buttons for our climate controls, which is really nice. So we have got heated seats, but not cooled. Um, obviously, yeah, we have this ZF box, which is a great gearbox, actually really, really nice to use. Very intuitive, much better than these fiddly little crystal knobs you get in BMWs now. Um, much more intuitive. The dials, yeah, they're great. They're up to date, they're electric. Uh, it's a screen now, but I have to say I preferred the analog. I think that was a real nice feature about this car. And I know it was in the past and they had to change it and bring it up to date, but I quite enjoyed the analog if I'm being honest. And it's a shame to see that, well, not that they've updated it because they have to, but you know, I liked the analog before. We can go through this screen and have a few different displays. And uh, I don't want to be negative, but the, the infotainment, despite what I said right at the start of the video, because of how I remembered it, it is not it's not quite as good as the rivals the the german stuff now has improved a lot i think in the last three or so years and even their touch stuff is is more responsive than this this actually feels a little bit lagging now and it doesn't seem to be that they updated it i think if they had updated it then this would feel you know about bang on but it seems to have not really gone anywhere in the last three years I'm just going to have another look in here to see if there's any way I can change the driving mode. I don't think I can, which is a real, I'm really gutted about that. Now, I've been going through this screen now for a few minutes and I just cannot find any way to change the driving mode. So what I'm getting at is basically, I know I've said it, but in race mode, which is the sound mode. So in other words, I'm in natural now and if I downshift, it still sounds good. But if I do a big it's not as pronounced as in race where there's more noise but i've got a really sharp throttle response really firm suspension i can actually soften that which is good um, and the steering is a lot firmer and stiffer i want to have the noise but i want to have the comfort stuff as well and i can't do that which is a, a bloody shame actually because i love this thing okay well look I'm going to get over that now and just enjoy it. So let's just show these electric cars who's boss. And yeah, we're at 100 miles an hour again, just like that. It's really remarkable. And this is not going to be important for at least the UK consumers among us, but 100 miles an hour in eighth gear right now, um, just under 3,000 RPM. You could sit here all day long, albeit a little bit firm. This thing really shines on the twisties though, so I'm going to go back onto the Alpine route and just give it a good old thrashing and see if I can find a smile somewhere because I'm just a little bit gutted by this experience actually. I, I was hoping it would be better than I remembered, not the same, if not a little bit worse. Oh, and do you see that? I mean, I'm really being gentle with the throttle right now, but in this race mode, it is so unbelievably responsive. It's impossible to drive it smoothly. It's quite distracting and annoying. In fairness, what I will say though, is that in natural mode, so the comfort mode, or even the other one, I'm not quite sure what that stands for, the sound is still really good. Maybe that's because of this Akrapovich exhaust. So the difference in exhaust noise between race and natural is much less than it was in the previous model I tested, if that makes sense. So actually, the issue with not being able to keep it out of race and have the noise is more negligible than it was before. It still sounds good in the normal mode, whereas last time it was really kind of dull. As you can hear, in natural, it's still a great sounding thing. Right, so I'm gonna put it into race now, really try and enjoy it. We're in manual, so it won't upshift for me. I like that, it can be fixed manual gears going to use these paddles and just enjoy myself so down into third gear and it's easy to forget that you're in an SUV because it just doesn't drive like it but it does feel a little bit nervous it gets kind of upset by all of the undulations and bumps it's not as settled as I remembered it being before and again that's probably just down to having more experience with slightly more compliant cars now but yeah it does feel a bit nervous obviously i'm driving it right now in race which means the traction control is off and so it does break away a little bit i think it's rear wheel drive bias this car we're keeping up with this kn turbo absolutely fine but it just doesn't feel as settled as that thing would to drive let's go for it yeah, I can't, I can't keep up with him. Dare I say it, it's a little bit of a handful, this. And yeah, I 
I really, despite my best efforts, I'm feeling a bit gutted. I'm not enjoying this like I thought I would. And it doesn't give me those same feelings and memories that, you know, I had before. Oh. Don't get me wrong, you know, it's wonderful to drive, but I can now understand why, well, they don't sell all that many of these. When was the last time you saw a Stelvio Quadrifoglio on the road? Deflated is the word, deflated. I wanted to come on here and tell you how I was reunited with the best car that I'd ever driven. But it just doesn't feel like that to me anymore. So I hope you've all enjoyed this video and potentially found it entertaining seeing the smile on my face slowly fade away as I've been a little bit disappointed with this Stelvio Quadrifoglio. I am, uh, I think it's a bit of a shame really. I wanted to really love this car and just immediately experience what I had experienced before, but it's just not done that for me. It just feels too fidgety and it's not been moved on enough in terms of keeping up with the competition. I think before it was there or thereabouts and now it does feel quite a long way behind. It feels archaic and antique-like in comparison to some of the other stuff that's on the market today. So all in all, a bit of a disappointment. I'm really genuinely upset about this. Um, I'd always wanted more time in one of these, potentially even wanted to own one someday, but I think the ship has sailed on that one, unfortunately. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Sorry it wasn't more positive. Don't get me wrong, it's a lovely car to drive. It is good fun, but it's, it's not as good as it needs to be. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next video very, very soon.